Kerosene, often associated with jet fuel, lanterns, and even camping stoves, has been a vital energy source for over a century. It's a clear, flammable liquid that burns cleanly and stores well, making it a favorite for aviation, heating, and lighting in many parts of the world. But have you ever stopped to wonder, how exactly is kerosene made? What's the science and process behind this versatile fuel? In this video, we're diving deep into the production of kerosene, from crude oil to combustion, revealing the fascinating journey it takes through complex refineries and precise chemical transformations. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Before we explore how kerosene is made, it's important to understand what it actually is. Kerosene is a type of hydrocarbon liquid, usually derived from crude oil. It falls within a specific boiling range, generally between 150 degrees Celsius and 275 degrees Celsius. This range makes kerosene less volatile than gasoline, but more volatile than diesel giving it a unique balance of properties that makes it suitable for a wide variety of uses. Originally known as coal oil in the 19th century, kerosene was first distilled from coal before the advent of modern petroleum refining. Today, it's primarily obtained through the distillation of crude oil, and it plays a critical role in aviation fuel, heating oil, and even as a solvent in some industrial applications. The process of making kerosene begins at the very source, crude oil. Crude oil is a naturally occurring liquid found in underground reservoirs composed of thousands of different hydrocarbons. It's extracted from the earth through drilling operations, whether offshore in deep oceans or onshore in oil fields. Once it's pumped to the surface, the crude oil is transported via pipelines, ships, or trucks to a refinery. Crude oil on its own isn't very useful. It must be separated and processed into specific fractions, including gasoline, diesel, lubricants, and of course, kerosene. This is where the real transformation begins. At the refinery, the first and most fundamental process used to separate crude oil into its components is called fractional distillation. Crude oil is heated in a large distillation tower until it vaporizes. This vapor then rises through a column with multiple trays or levels, each calibrated to condense different fractions based on boiling point. Heavier molecules condense near the bottom where it's hotter while lighter fractions condense higher up where it's cooler. Kerosene falls somewhere in the middle of the column. Its vapor condenses at a mid-level tray and is collected as a separate stream. This is the raw kerosene fraction, also known as straight-run kerosene, which must undergo further treatment before it's ready for commercial use. Although fractional distillation isolates the kerosene fraction, it's still not quite ready. Raw kerosene contains impurities such as sulfur, nitrogen compounds, and unsaturated hydrocarbons, which can affect performance, stability, and emissions. That's where hydro-treating comes in. During hydro-treating, the kerosene is mixed with hydrogen gas and passed over a catalyst under high temperature and pressure. This process removes sulfur and other contaminants, resulting in a cleaner, more stable product. In aviation-grade kerosene, such as Jet A or JP8, the standards are even more stringent. Additional additives may be mixed in to improve combustion performance, reduce freezing point, or prevent corrosion in fuel systems. Once treated, the kerosene is subjected to quality testing to ensure it meets industry standards. Parameters like flash point, freeze point, density, and sulfur content are measured carefully. 
The fuel must burn evenly, resist freezing at high altitudes, and remain chemically stable over long storage periods. If the kerosene meets the required specifications, it can be blended with other compatible hydrocarbons or additives depending on the intended use, whether it's aviation, household heating, or industrial purposes. Finally, it is sent to storage tanks, ready for packaging or distribution. There are different types of kerosene depending on how it's processed and what it's used for. The most well-known is aviation kerosene, which includes Jet A, Jet A1, and military grades like JP8. These fuels power jet engines around the globe and must meet rigorous international standards. Then there's household kerosene, often used for heating, lamps, and cooking in regions without access to electricity or gas infrastructure. This type is usually more refined and less odorous than earlier forms used in the 1800s. Lastly, industrial kerosene finds use as a solvent, cleaning agent, and even in pesticide formulations. Each application requires specific handling and safety measures, but the base manufacturing process remains largely the same. Making and using kerosene also comes with environmental implications. Although kerosene burns cleaner than heavier fuels like coal or diesel, it still releases carbon dioxide and small amounts of pollutants when combusted. Moreover, spills and improper storage can lead to soil and water contamination. As a result, refineries must follow strict environmental guidelines and users are advised to handle kerosene safely. Storing it in well-ventilated areas, away from heat sources, and using it only in approved appliances or engines. In recent years, the aviation industry has been exploring sustainable alternatives like bio-kerosene, made from plant oils or algae, to reduce dependence on fossil fuels and lower carbon emissions. So the next time you see a jet soar through the sky, light a kerosene lamp, or heat a home in winter, remember the journey this fuel has taken. From deep underground reservoirs to towering refinery columns, through precision chemical processes and rigorous safety checks, kerosene is more than just a liquid fuel. It's a refined product of science, engineering, and innovation. While the future may bring greener alternatives, kerosene continues to be a vital energy source, powering parts of our daily lives and connecting people around the world through air travel. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.